Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we finally get to make a video I've been talking about for a while. We were just waiting on a couple of things, but it's finally time to talk about audiobooks. If you're new here, my name is Katie Wismer. I am a freelance editor and the author of four books that are out right now. I'll have links down below in the description if you want to check them out and you should totally subscribe and stick around if you're into that kind of thing. My fourth book, The Anti-Relationship Year, came out March 30th of 2021. The audiobook came out that same day. I also recently had an audiobook made for book one, The Anti-Virginity Pact. They're standalones but companion books. You could read them without reading the other but they do go together very nicely. So I had two totally different processes for making the audiobook for each of these books. So we have two separate experiences to talk about. I had both of my audiobooks made through ACX and I had different narrators for each audiobook because each book follows a different character so I kind of wanted their voices to sound different. I have a bunch of stuff that I want to talk about just with my experience of making the audiobooks and then I also asked you guys over on Instagram to send in any questions that you have. So if you're not already following me over at Kate's Book Date you should definitely do that because I do interactive stuff like this for most videos. <laughs> I like hearing your input. So let's start with The Anti-Relationship Year just because that's the book that just came out. So I've had both of my audiobooks made through ACX and I've been wanting to make audiobooks for my books for a while but honestly I thought I couldn't afford it. Audiobooks can be a super super expensive process if you are paying for it up front especially if you have a longer book. You could be paying like four thousand dollars to have the audiobook made and after I've already invested thousands of dollars into these books outside of the audiobook. I just really felt like I couldn't justify that cost. I felt like I wouldn't make that kind of money back anytime soon so it didn't really seem worth it to me. And then I learned a little bit more about your options when you're making audiobooks and how you don't have to pay all of that money up front. Through ACX at least, I can only speak to what I have personal experience with, you can pay up front your narrator and you pay per finished hour. So you don't pay them for how long they're spending on the book, you're paying for how long the audiobook ends up being. If it's 10 hours long, you're paying a rate per hour for those 10 hours. So that's one way. You can do a royalty share where you don't pay the narrator any money up front, but they're getting half of your royalties. I believe it's for a seven year period, but that might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. For your audiobooks, you would usually be getting 40% royalties back for yourself. If you do that royalty share option, you are giving your narrator 20% and you're getting 20%. And then you could also do a royalty share plus deal. So you are sharing those royalties with your narrator and you're also paying them a per finished hour rate. That's just less than it would be if you were just straight up paying them. ACX also has two options on how you distribute audiobooks. You can do wide distribution, so it can be pretty much everywhere, but the only way that you can do that is if you pay your narrator completely upfront. You can't do any of the royalty share stuff, so you better have $4,000 to fork over basically if you want your audiobook everywhere. And then if you do the royalty share or the royalty share plus deal, you have to have your book exclusive through Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. Those are the only places that your audiobook will be. I think by the way that I'm talking about this, you can already tell which direction I went. I did not pay per finished hour exclusively for both of these books because like I said I just didn't think I could afford to do that and then the audiobooks never would have been made. So for the anti-relationship year I guess I'm gonna have to talk about these two like concurrently. The audiobook production for the anti-virginity pact actually started back in September. The audiobook production for the anti-relationship year started in February. They both came out around the same time so we got some stuff to talk about with that. Both of my narrators were great. I'm so thankful for the work that they did. I'm super happy with the finished products for both of them. So I don't mean this in any way to be any like shade towards them. I just am gonna tell you the experience that I had. So I guess maybe we should talk about this one first because it kind of goes into what I did for this one. The Anti-Virginity Pact, I just did a royalty share deal. So the narrator who I hired, she auditioned and I loved her audition so much. She sounded perfect. She and I got to talking about, you know, my timeline for the book and what I wanted out of the audiobook and she didn't have any experience making audiobooks. She didn't- I don't think she'd done any before my book but her audition sounded so professional, she had good equipment and she told me she would be willing to do the book just for the royalty share deal basically for experience because this would be her first audiobook and she kind of wanted to learn how to do it. Me, a self-employed indie author, was like that sounds fantastic. So she and I went into just a royalty share deal. So we signed the contract for her to be brought on as the narrator, I believe in September, with the original timeline being the book would be done the last week of November. The last week of November rolled around, she wasn't finished with it, so gave her a little bit of extra time, 
And what I think happened, I haven't asked her, but what I think probably is likely that happened is, um, cause this was her first time doing this, she just underestimated how much time it was going to take her because the book was supposed to be done in November and I ended up getting it at the end of March. So that is clearly a big discrepancy. So the only reason I even like mention that in this video is if you choose to go down that path and you hire someone who doesn't have any experience, who agrees to do like a royalty share deal, and again, just isn't as familiar with making audiobooks, you might run into something similar where they're just not as familiar with the process and it takes them longer than they originally thought. So it took a lot longer to make the audiobook than we had planned for. ACX does have really strict guidelines for quality. So in order to get your audiobook approved, it has to meet all of these things. So I'm assuming either the actual narration took her longer than she was expecting or the editing took longer or maybe her original files weren't approved and she had to redo them. I don't really know what the case is. All I know is it took four months longer than I thought it was going to. That was my first experience with an audiobook, which was a little bit frustrating because I did have an original marketing plan all around the release of the audiobook, which I had to change entirely because of the timeline. So then when I went in to make the second audiobook, I decided I wanted to hire someone who was experienced who had made several audiobooks in the past. So then for the anti-relationship year, I think I started looking for narrators in January or February. I hired my narrator in February. She had done several audiobooks before. She had this super professional at-home studio. Her audition sounded perfect. And we went into a royalty share plus deal. So she was gonna be getting a portion of my royalties and I was also gonna pay her per finished hour up front. Well, not up front, you pay her when it's done but I was gonna pay her per finished hour a smaller amount than her usual rates. Her name's Kim Churchill. I think she did a fantastic job on the audiobook. I listened to it myself for fun the other day and it was fantastic. And so I reached out to her after her audition saying like, I loved your audition. I would be interested to know what your rate for a royalty share plus deal would be. And the rate that she gave back to me was just a little bit over what I wanted to spend. So um, I'm really, really grateful to her because I reached out to her and I was like, I would love to work with you, but I'm just, that's just out of my budget. I totally understand if this is too far below your usual rate, but is there any chance you would do it for this? And she agreed, which was fabulous. So in addition to having the royalty share agreement, I also ended up paying her $60 per finished hour was the rate. Which you might think, that sounds like a lot. For audiobook narrators, that's actually not that much. If you go through the experienced audiobook narrators on ACX, a lot of them charge $200 to $400 per finished hour for audiobooks. Like I said, it can get very expensive. So $60 seemed really reasonable. I think they say that one finished hour of an audiobook tends to take the narrator three hours to do with the recording, the editing, and all of the stuff that they have to do. So 60 per finished hour was more like $20 an hour, which I feel like is a fair rate for sure. So the book ended up being a little over eight hours long. So cost of this audiobook ended up being about $490 for that per finished hour cost. So this one, I didn't pay anything up front, but I'm sharing my royalties with the narrator for this one. This one costs a little under $500 to be made. And I'm also sharing the royalties with this one. Oh, and I forgot to say the timeline of this was fantastic. Like I said, I hired her in February she had it done by the first week of March I think within like two weeks she had it done and she got it done for me a month before release date because ACX has a long processing time to approve the files before your book can go live so we purposefully finished it early with the hopes that it would go up in time for release day which it did and it was available on release day so this was a super fast efficient professional experience. I really, really enjoyed working with her. Would definitely hire her again. I'll have her Instagram link down below if you want to look into her. So I think that was like all of the basics of the process. Let me see what questions you guys sent in. I know it's very new, but have you found it worth it so far? So obviously for the anti-virginity pact, I didn't pay anything up front. So any money that comes in from that feels like found money. The anti-relationship year, I did the math and figuring out how much I'm going to make per audiobook. I have no way of knowing until I get my first set of royalties, which will be, I think, later this month. So I don't know exactly how much money I'm gonna be making per audiobook. I'll put a screenshot up on the screen. So it gives you a report of how many you've sold and there's a delay. It takes like three days before sales start to show up, but it'll show up every three days. And you can see it's separated based on how the person bought the audiobook. So did they use a membership credit through Audible? Are they a member, but they bought the book without a credit? Are they not a member and did they buy it? So I'm assuming by the fact that it differentiates between these different things that I'm gonna get paid something different depending on how the person bought the audiobook. So I had to kind of 
estimate how much money I think I'm gonna make from an audiobook. So if you watch my video on how much it costs to self-publish my book, we did a little bit of discussion on return on investment and how many copies I needed to sell to get that money back. So I did the same thing for the audiobook. So again, the price of the audiobook is different depending on a bunch of different factors. On Amazon, it shows up at $17.46. I think it shows up as a different amount on Audible though, if you're a member. But anyway, the math I did, I estimated that the audiobook cost $17 and because we did the royalty share plus deal with my narrator I'll be getting 20% royalties instead of 40% so that means if someone buys the book for $17 I'd make about $3.04 from that book which is about how much I make for a paperback and more than I make for an ebook so honestly even though it's the 20% instead of the 40%, that's pretty on par with the royalty I usually make from a book, so like that's fine to me. So $3.04 and I paid her about $490. So we would have to sell about 144 audiobooks to make that back, just to break even and start seeing a profit. The book has only been out for two and a half weeks so far, and the audiobook has already sold a lot. It seems to be really popular. People seem to be really excited about the audiobook, which was a relief. I had no idea how that was going to go because I'd never done audiobooks before. So selling 144 audiobooks, I'm confident we can do. I don't know how long it's going to take, maybe a month, maybe two, maybe longer, but I'm confident we'll make that money back eventually for sure. The great thing about indie publishing is a book's life is not make it or break it on release week. The longevity of a book in indie publishing is a lot longer. So the book just came out and we've already sold, um, I don't have the exact number with me, audiobooks, but we sold about a half as many as we need to already within the first two weeks to make that money back. So I'm not worried about that. It seems to be worth it so far. The $4,000 up front, that scared me though. <laughs> How hard was it to find a narrator and was it harder because you're indie published? No, so let's talk a little bit about that. That's a good question. Thank you, Jacob. Basically, the way the ACX works if you're an indie publisher is you post your book and you basically just open it up for auditions and you can put settings like I'm looking for someone who wants to do a royalty share deal. I'm looking for someone who wants to do no higher than this rate for per finished hour. I will warn you, if you list your book as just royalty share, you're gonna get a lot of auditions that are really bad quality, not a lot of professional people. So I would say you're interested in royalty share and also put royalty share plus as an option and be prepared for people to have offers based on that. Your narrator puts so much work into the book and they're def they definitely deserve to get paid, so be reasonable. Especially if you're a newer author, it's your first book, they have no reason to believe that they're gonna make their money back. and like you've no proof of sale, um, just be realistic. In my listing, when I opened it up for audition, I literally put my marketing plan at the bottom so they could read it. I told them like, you know, I've had these books come out, my sales have been around here, this is my online following. So I gave them some reasons to trust that they would make their money back on me if they did the royalty share. So basically you post your book, you post a little snippet of your book, like two pages, and then people will audition. So they'll read the two pages that you provided and you go through and you listen to those samples and you can choose your narrator from there. The anti-relationship year, I only had 14 auditions because um, Kim was one of the first people to audition and I loved her immediately and I was like, you. Um, with the anti-virginity pact, because it was my first time doing this, I was a lot less decisive on which narrator I wanted. So it was up for audition for a lot longer. I'm trying to pull it up to see how many auditions I got. It's been a while. The anti-virginity pact got 50 auditions before I chose someone, which took a long time to listen through them all. I listened to them all several times trying to decide. And like I said, people who are interested in a royalty share deal, I don't know if you guys get these these videos and your recommendations on YouTube, but there's all these people who are like, can you read? You can make money. And they're telling people to go narrate audiobooks. These people who have no experience and no professional equipment, and there's no way in how the that quality is gonna pass ACX's guidelines and now ACX is flooded with these people who are just trying to make some extra money and they don't have any experience with audiobooks. So I would just be wary of that and hiring someone who, there's a difference, like my first narrator, she's like interested in becoming a narrator. This isn't just like something she was doing to try and make some money easily. But there's literally people it sounds like they're like recording it on that little microphone on their headphones. Like it's so quiet and the quality is so poor. So. Obviously you don't want to take on someone like that because even if they do it all for you, there's no way that book's gonna get approved through the process. Like there's absolutely no way. And then there's some where there's like background noise and they're like stumbling over their words and they're not even trying to like edit it out. So there, basically there are some auditions that you throw away immediately because you know, 
just there's absolutely no way. And then there's some people who are professional audiobook narrators who've been doing this for 20 years and they're fabulous and it sounds amazing, but they're gonna cost you $4,000. So I found my sweet spot was finding people who have narrated some audiobooks but are still willing to negotiate on price. They're still kind of building their portfolio, but they still sound super professional and the audiobook quality is good. So you kind of have to find a balance through that. So finding people to narrate was not an issue for me. I just posted the book and then people came to me and auditioned. And I got auditions for both books within like 24 hours. Um, it was very fast. The hard part for me was just deciding. Uh, someone asked, did you get to hear any of the funny bloopers? No. So basically the way it works is once you hire your narrator, you'll send them the document and they will send you the first 15 minutes of the audiobook for you to approve. So during this time, you listen to it, see if there's anything you want to change and suggest, like actually want the voice to sound like this or something like that. And then once you approve the first 15 minutes, they go on and they complete the rest of the audiobook. And it's up to the narrator whether or not they want to upload the whole thing when they're done or if they want to go in chunks and upload the chapter by chapter. My first narrator for the Anti-Virginity Pact, she uploaded each chapter for me once she was finished. And then with my second narrator for the Anti-Relationship Year, she just uploaded the whole thing when she was done. But either way, those final files that they're sending, that's the final file. They've already edited it and everything. You should still listen through each chapter to make sure there are no mistakes just to approve it but you don't hear the like raw clips or anything. Something I've been talking about a lot in my vlogs lately is waiting for approval with the audiobook so basically what happens is once the audiobook narrator is done they'll send you the files you listen through and you have to hit approve and then once you approve ACX starts their approval process and they say it can take up to 30 business days. For the anti-relationship year it took 20 days to approve. The anti-virginity pact once that was finally done took 15 days. I'm lucky both of mine got approved relatively quickly. I've heard horror stories of it taking a lot longer but mine both got approved within what I think was a pretty reasonable time frame. Another thing I've learned since doing this is I have no control over the price of the audiobook which is kind of weird as an indie author. I'm used to having complete control over everything. I can price my paperbacks, my ebooks however I want. The audiobook price is automatically set by ACX and you can't change it. It's odd too because they can also like basically put your book on sale and you have no control over that. So for example, like we were just talking about the anti-relationship years audiobook is $17. But if you go on Amazon for the anti-virginity pack, that audiobook, it's originally priced the same as the anti-relationship year. But right now on Amazon, it's showing up kind of as on sale for $14. So I don't know why <laughs> or... How, if that's permanent, it's gonna say that, like, I just have no control over the pricing for the books, which is just different and not something that I knew about beforehand. So yeah, feel free to leave me a comment down below if you have any other questions or anything else you're curious about. If you missed any of the other release week content for the anti-relationship year, I put up a video every single week during release week. We had some really interesting stuff go up, I think. So I'll have the playlist link down below if you missed any of those videos. I'll also have links to the books down there if you want to pick them up or the audiobooks if you want to listen to them. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for following along for this whole process. It's been, I mean, I've had my YouTube channel for as long as I've been publishing, but I feel like this was the first book that I really took you along through the entire process in real time. Even back to writing the rough draft, I was basically writing the majority of the rough draft while I was on live streams on here and hanging out with you guys. So this book feels very like close to the community, I guess. I don't know. It just feels like you guys were a part of this process the entire time, which is just kind of cool. But I think that's going to be it for today's video. I'd appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up if you liked the video, and I will just see you guys in my next one very, very soon. Bye. No.